I'm noticing a new trend with Trump's foreign policy. And I know that many of us have had ideas about foreign policy that have always rooted back to oil and oil wars and uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, and being friends with the Middle East, you know, Saudis anyway, and, and making war with the rest of the Middle East in order to destabilize maybe on behalf of Israel or on behalf of gaining resources. A lot of us have carried this worldview with us for the last 20 years because for the last 20 or so years, that has been the agenda. But I believe with Donald Trump, his focus has shifted in a completely different direction. And I believe now that I've connected all of these dots in my mind that his foreign policy almost exclusively revolves around China, that he is hyper focused on China and he is hyper focused on stopping their Belt and Road Initiative. And the, the Beirut blast. Now, you'll have to just go back and watch that video. I'm not going to go over all of that right now. But when when you look at that blast and you realize that Beirut was a, a serious major port for China and you start to look at all of the other major areas that China is needing for their Belt and Road Initiative, it all starts to make sense that all roads are leading to China when it comes to Donald Trump. In fact, when you look back at, do you remember when Trump wanted to buy Greenland? And this was big news. We were, oh gosh, Trump actually thinks he can buy Greenland. What kind of an idiot is he? And why would he even want to buy Greenland? What's the issue with Greenland? You know, why he just wants to be a dictator, a conqueror. He just wants to go around and, and uh, gather land. This is what the media was saying. Greenland is actually an extremely strategic port for China in their Belt and Road Initiative. They need to go through that Arctic region. They want to build infrastructure in Greenland. They want uh, resources from Greenland. They want partnerships from Greenland, and they're gaining those. And so Trump, uh, when he was looking at Greenland, it was a way to possibly stop China's Belt and Road Initiative. Um, when you look at many of the other areas that we've been going through in the Middle East and uh, other areas that Trump has been discussing, a lot of them have to do with China and their, their, the stopping of giving China resources. Now, Iran is an interesting one because I know that the rhetoric for Iran is we need to stop them from getting a nuclear weapon. Now, that is certainly the rhetoric that has been effective in the minds of Americans. And I think that uh, many of the government officials either already believe Iran already has a, a, a nuclear weapon or they think there's no way that Iran is ever going to get one and that Iran has no interest in having one, which very well might be true. Uh, a nuclear weapon is against Iran's, it's against their religion, quite honestly. They they don't believe in using weapons of mass destruction. Um, it's And since they are run, their country is a, an actual theoc theocracy run by an ayatollah, it's very possible that they would not want to get their hands on a nuclear weapon, but that they really were trying to gain nuclear resources for energy. Um, However, you know, the, the rhetoric around Iran has always been we can't we have to stop them from getting a nuke. They are the, the world's greatest state sponsor of terrorism, which is not true. That would be Saudi Arabia and the United States. Um, and that has been the rhetoric. But I wonder if really the underlying reason of wanting to sanction Iran and wanting to stop Iranians from from being able to build up their infrastructure and the recent attacks that we've seen all around Iran with their manufacturing plants, their military operations, their ports, uh, their energy sectors, that all of those attacks on Iran have actually been in order to stop China because China actually gains quite a bit of its resources from Iran. And we just saw a huge historic deal between Iran and China recently. So really, perhaps the underlying real issue, because they never tell us the truth, right? They march us into wars, they march us into conflicts, and they lie to us. They say, oh, it's because of this, because they think you are going to buy this, whatever this is. So when they say Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction, you bought that one time 20 years ago. They were able to sell it to you, hook, line, and sinker, right? And they said, well, that worked, so maybe we could do it again with Iran. And the fact that uh, the the those who are very pro-Israel have that fear of Iran and the fear of the growing influence of Iran throughout the Middle East and the and what that would mean for them and their existence in the Middle East. A lot of them have that that fear of, of Iran already. And so continuing to go continue to um, focus on that fear is a winning way to gain American support for potentially stopping Iran. Now, if Trump were to come out and say, we must stop Iran because China wants to buy their oil, China wants to do a deal with them, and China wants to build up their infrastructure, and uh, and, and they're a major partner for China and their Belt and Road, I don't think you're going to go and say, let's go to war with Iran over that. 
I don't think any of us are going to say, yeah, that's a good reason to go to war with Iran for. No, we're not going to buy that. So what they have to do is say, oh, weapons of mass destruction, state sponsor of terrorism. They have to say the things that they know will work. So they also do this. Now, I want to share with you, um, this was a news article. I have to find it. But um, I didn't have it pulled up for whatever reason here. What's interesting is what's going on right now in Belarus. So Belarus, you know that they're going through major protests, uh, uprisings. Uh, Lincoln Shaco, look, that guy is, uh, every Belarusian I know says that he's a terrible leader and that, uh, you know, that, you know, they lack democracy and whatnot there. There are some Belarusian people, however, that counter that. And they say, no, we're just one of the last actual socialist holdouts. And, and that's demonized by the West and that's demonized by capitalists. And so you can't believe everything you read. I don't know. I don't live there. Uh, and I haven't done enough research on the way the people live in Belarus in order to have an opinion either way. And quite frankly, it's really none of our business as Americans leave that to the Belarusian people to deal with. If they've got a dictator on their hands, then they need to overthrow their dictator, just like the way the the revolutions all through Europe got rid of monarchies. That's what you just have to do. The way that the the American Revolution got rid of the British British control over the colonies, that's what you've got to do if that's what you're going to do. Um, but a lot of people are saying, you know, this is a color revolution. This is just a way for um, Western influences to gain a foothold in Belarus in order to stop expand really to stop um, Chinese expansion now Belarus is a big interest for China in their Belt and Road China is saying you know China's looking at what's going on in Belarus as a threat to their Belt and Road initiative and so pay attention to this I just want you guys all to pay attention to this new uh, the new target of the next wave of American wars or sanctions pay attention to the new target it's not the same old target the the focus has shifted at least for Trump it has now I don't believe that Trump has any intention of getting us into any new wars I think he talks tough you know when it comes to Iran and he says oh you know you guys cross the line and something's going to happen to you and I same with Syria you know he's oh Syria Syria and then ultimately tries to withdraw most of our troops from Syria minus the ones that are guarding the oil why are they guarding the oil well because China wants that oil so you've got um I I really don't think he's going to try to march us into any new conflicts by any means but I do think that he is going aggressively against China aggressively against China's Belt and Road. And I think using sanctions are an act of war. It is a way to devastate populations. It is a way to um, it can get people to, you know, they'll, they'll starve. They won't have access to medicines, to food. Their their ways of, of life will go way down, you know, with heavy sanctions. It's an act of war against the common person in that country. And I'm absolutely against sanctions for sure. But I do think sanctions are... You know, it's worse to bomb and invade and and conduct a regime change in that way. But sanctioning is a way to conduct regime change. It's trying to get the people themselves so desperate that they rise up and that they want to overthrow their government. Um, We're seeing that, I believe, even right now here in this in our country. Now we're seeing sort of a that same strategy being used where it's get the people so desperate, make them so feeling so uneasy that they take to the streets and they start a revolution. It's an age old trick that we've been using since we decided to try to stop actually going in with boots on the ground military interventions. We've been trying these new waves of of um, of ways to- trying to topple regimes. And I, I believe that this is another thing that's happening against Trump and the Trump administration. I do think that the establishment, especially the military controlled establishment, absolutely wants to see this guy out of office. They want to return to the status quo where they're able to go and affect all kinds of regime change around around the world without somebody kind of putting the brakes on it. Trump goes along with it, as we've seen. He kind of goes along with it a bit in Venezuela. He goes along with it a little bit in Iran. He goes along with it a little bit in Syria. And then he puts the brakes on it and says, I don't want to do that anymore. I'm not going to go any further. And ultimately, as commander in chief, he has that ability to do that. So you were seeing right now a, a, a military a full court press from the military industrial complex to get him out of office. We're seeing 
Democrat and Republican warmongers come together and in a bipartisan effort to say Trump is bad for trying to negotiate peace with dictators like Kim Jong-un and terrible, terrible uh, regimes like the Taliban and uh, people who gas their own people like Assad, you know, kind of hands off with him and saying, you know, I've lost interest. Let's just get out. There's nothing more we can do. We defeated ISIS. That was the plan. Let's get out of here. I think we're seeing this full court press to try to get him out. We saw that last week during the Democratic National Convention. During the Democratic National Convention, have you ever seen more warmongers come together to say Trump bad? I mean, you had Colin Powell up there, the guy that helped lie us into the Iraq war. Uh, John Kerry, who has one of the worst foreign policies on record as Secretary of State. You know, you've got all these Obama era war hawks and you have all of these Bush era war hawks coming together to say Trump bad. Trump is the first president in a long time to not march us into new wars. Like him or not, that is the truth. Did he ramp up some bombing in some places? Yes, he did. Um, In Syria, he ramped it up and then got us out. Not fully out. You know, uh, has he been able to pull us out of out of the area completely no like i said guarding syrian oil i think has more to do with china than anything and i think he's a hawk when it comes to china and anything china related he's an absolute hawk so um and you know there's some there's some aspect of that that is good i think that the the country has been turning a blind eye to china for a very long time and should not China is rising, a rising power, and they do practice some unfair tactics. Some of those unfair tactics are unfair because we've allowed them. We have rules that allow our country to be up for sale. We have rules that allow for our government to be up for sale to the highest bidder. We have rules that allow for capitalism to run amok. They took advantage of our capitalist system. They, in turn, are not capitalists, so we are not able to go in and have the same issues the same uh, response on China as they've had on us. For example, Trump, as you know, has been going after TikTok and WeChat uh, and oh, Huawei, you know, all of these Chinese companies. He uses the national security threat as the reason for going after them, but that's not really why. The reason is because he's upset that China doesn't allow our companies into China. Facebook's not allowed into China. I believe Google can't be in China or uh, WhatsApp. You know, all these different companies can't be there, but they're allowed to come here and use our open market. So a lot of that is more about um, going after China and trying to put a stop to the fact that they are beginning to buy us and own us outright. And I think Trump sees that threat and he's trying to put a stop to it. The problem with his strategy is... What really needs to happen is we need to maybe reevaluate the level of capitalism that we have in our society. We maybe need to have some more controls on it. And because Trump is on a Republican ticket running alongside Republicans with a Republican base, one of the fundamental tenets of the Republican Party is less government intervention, right? They want free markets, free trade, uh, and, and government to stay out of it. So when they have that idea, it's very difficult to say, okay, if China's not going to allow us to have companies in China, then we should also come up with some rules that don't allow them to have companies here in the United States. Well, the problem with that is that is against free market capitalism. So, uh, or to say, look, maybe we shouldn't allow Chinese nationals to buy up all of our real estate. Like they've been buying hundreds of acres of farmland. They bought the Waldorf Astoria and AMC theaters and legendary entertainment. They own a lot of our products and a lot of our iconic American products. Uh, companies. And uh, rather than saying, look, we're going to put some provisions on this where they're not allowed to do this, we instead, um, we we can't do that because that would be fundamentally anti-free market capitalism. So Republicans are having an issue because they see the threat, the growing threat of Chinese dominance in the world and even Chinese dominance on our shores. It's not just China is dominating around the world. That would be one thing. But they're dominating in our own country. And Republicans are the ones that are pointing it out. Now, Democrats are saying, that's racist. How dare you do that? That's racist. You know, you're just demonizing the Chinese for no reason. And, um, you know, so they, but that's because Democrats have become more of the free market, uh, um, you know, globalist, let's go and trade with everybody and who cares if it hurts the American worker. Trump has got this kind of 
problem going on with the Republican Party where on one hand he's all about oh you know we got to we got to protect America America first and we've got to have some more isolationist policies but those isolationist policies are fundamentally anti what the Republican Party has traditionally been about so good luck you know trying to fix that I think it's changing I think the Republican Party as we're seeing from the convention is shifting I think we're starting to see the shifts that are going it's interesting to watch in real time it's kind of like what I can imagine what happened with the Democratic Party back in the 60s and 70s when it shifted from being really the party of racists to the party that was supposed to be, you know, anti-racist. And I'm sure for many, uh, it, it happened in front of them. And that's why so many of those Southern Democrats became Republicans, because they saw the Republican Party courting them and the Democratic Party kind of purging them. And it's going to be interesting as if Trump were to win another four more years, it would be really it's going to be really interesting to see what happens to the Republican Party. Will they continue to go into this America first workers uh, primary focus and Trump continuing to uh, shut down Chinese companies and shut down Chinese expansion in the way that he's been doing it by using the powers of the executive branch and by using rhetoric like they're a threat to national security in order to stop it rather than just saying, look, we just can't allow it. They don't allow us to do it. We can't allow them to do it. So we need to create new policies. What they're trying to do instead is trying to strong arm China into capitalism. So they're trying to bully them into capitalism rather than clamping down on the rampant free reign of the free market capitalism that the United States has let become a big monster. The reality is we need to rein in a bit on our free market capitalism. I'm not anti-capitalists. I'm not anti-capitalism per se. I want to make that clear. I know that there are there is kind of a shift in narrative going on right now where a lot of people are really, really embracing uh, an anti-capitalist sort of system. I'm a big fan of the Nordic model where it's a blend. It's a healthy blend of uh, capitalism mixed, which allows people to, you know, kind of strive for that billionaire status, I suppose, and a mixture of really supporting the, the people of the nation and ensuring that your nation remains healthy and happy and optimistic and able to thrive. So I'm a real big fan of that blended system. But in order to get that blended system, we do have to rein in on this free market capitalism. And I think what we're seeing with Trump and his base is that a lot of them are starting to feel that same sentiment. So that's a really interesting thing to kind of watch happening in real time.